Again, my name is Wanda Adams, and I welcome you to this um, session today of increasing collaboration using Google Apps. And this is applicable for anyone teaching from lower elementary all the way to high school. As I've mentioned previously, my name is, um, I'm a technology coordinator. I'm a Google certified trainer, and um, I'm a passionate reading teacher. And I'm a mother of three, um, a 23 year old, 11 and an almost three year old. So getting in um, real quickly without wasting any other, any time, today's objectives, we're going to be creating a hyperdoc using Google Docs and slides. And we'll create a choose your own adventure story using Google Slides and we'll have fun. Now, what is a hyperdoc? The term, the term was coined by these three wonderful ladies, Lisa Highfield, Kelly Hilton, and Sarah Landis. And they are passionate educators who, you know, thrive to, um, strive to um, um, encourage teachers to create more engaging um, lessons for their students. There's a website that you can use called hyperdocs.co, where you have a um, myriad of resources and um, trainings um, that you can use. They're all free to help support you on this journey. And there's also a book that they've written, the Hyperdoc Handbook, and it's sold on Amazon. So what is a hyperdoc? First of all, it's an interactive, engaging student-centered digital lesson that is intentionally designed by the teacher. What is meant by this is it's not just a, a Google Doc that you um, create the hyperlinks to and, student, and send it to your students. It's intentionally designed, meaning you choose your objective, you intentionally choose the resources that you want your students to access, and you create opportunities for them to demonstrate their learning and their understanding within this document. Additionally, um, it's a tool that you can use to collaborate, for students to collaborate, think critically, and combine information from myriad, um, from multiple resources. As we know, the three rules where students, when you ask students to research, for example, they should be able to use more than one resources in order to determine how um, the val how valid the information is. Um, a hyperdoc, this is just a document to um, show you the difference between a hyperdoc and, the, and a Google slide that is, or a document that has hyperlinks. Like it's the same things that I mentioned earlier. Um, I'm sorry if I'm rushing, I know that we've lost a few minutes. Um, so hyperdoc, an, an example of a hyperdoc. So I'm going to be pasting a link in the chat and you're going to join me on a, on a hyperdoc. This hyperdoc that I've created here is, well, I created this one especially for all participants of this, um, of this conference. So kindly click on the link and join me on the hyperdoc that I've created. Uh, Wanda, uh, yes. did every, um, I don't see the link. Okay, now you see, I see the link. Okay, sorry. It didn't appear in the chat. Now it's... Okay. If everyone you you can find the link in the in the chat window because I want to have shared link so you can join his hyperlink document. Okay, here is people joining. Okay, I see people are joining. I'll just wait a quick minute um, to see if other people are gonna join. 
Okay, as I said earlier, this particular high product that I created here um, is specifically for you um, teachers. Um, so we'll get started. I'm using the, 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 the template that is called apply, Explore Apply. Explore, explain, apply, sorry. And as you'll see, um, please follow along, please interact with this document as if you were a student. Um, so you see the objectives I have, I says by the end of this lesson, you will understand how technology is changing education. So kindly, kindly begin by following the explore, number one of the explore function. So you start over in the left where you watch the video on how technology will evolve by 2050. And I have the object, what you're gonna do after you finish watching this video, you click on the link to join a Jamboard. We're going to take 10 minutes to complete this activity, please. Sticky notes can be found over here, please. Um, if you've not used Jamboard before, it's the fourth icon the, to create a sticky note. You'll click on the fourth icon on the left toolbar.
Just a reminder for those who have not joined the Jamboard as yet, it's the fourth icon on the task bar, on the toolbar, is where you'll find um, the sticky notes. Once you've finished with number one, guys, you can go on to numbers two and three. We're working on the explore feature. You don't have to wait on the others. You, you're doing this um, along the way. We would like to make to finish the explore feature, the explore um, component of the lesson within the next five minutes, please. Again, it's, this is just an exemplar. You don't need to give elaborate responses. So I've set a timer for five more minutes um, for us to complete the first um, explore. If you have any questions, please put it in the chat. Okay, we are gonna finish this um, part in about one and a half minutes. We're gonna end the explain, the explore 
ask activity in one minute, 20 seconds. Hey guys, thank you so much for completing, um, for participating in that aspect of the lesson. Now let's just move on to the explain component. If you didn't finish all, if you didn't get an opportunity to um, complete all of the explore feature um, activities, that's okay. Again, this is just for you to see what an, um, a hyperdoc looks like. Um, let's just move on to the explain feature. where it's now asking you to reflect on what we've done in, um, in the engage aspect. After exploring the video and the article, um, please record your responses here. So there is a, a Google doc, kindly join the document. And this is a good way for you, um, for your students to collaborate. So after you've given them an opportunity to explore the content that you are going to be teaching them, you now have an opportunity to have them collaborate. Uh, just choose a color. Um, we weren't able to create the breakout rooms. Um, so this um, would have been done if you're doing this in a, digitally, you would have assigned your students the breakout rooms and they can, um, you can assign it for a different color. If you look through the slide deck, you'll notice that each slide, like I have groups of slides in different colors. And so your students, will, you would um, assign colors to your students so that they can know which uh, which color they're working on. I'm going to be changing the layout of this um, slide so that I can see the entire class. And I'm hoping that you can still see my screen. Let me make sure. Yeah. Wanda, if you want, I can create a breakout rooms with a color if you give me one minute. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna create it meanwhile. Okay. So we have 26 people. I'm gonna create six breakout rooms and I'm gonna assign different colors to the breakout rooms. Yes. I'm gonna rename with the colors, okay? Yes. As you ask. How long do you would you like to have the breakout rooms last for? Seven minutes, please. Okay. Um, guys, this was just an activity to show you how your students can be working or responding to an uh, to a prompt um, in Google Slide um, collaboratively. And as a teacher, you can have a kind of a bird's eye view uh, of how to, to manage how your students are responding. By changing the layout to this grid view, um, by clicking the grid view at the bottom here, you can see all of the slides at once. 
And Wanda, I think the, 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 the very care room is still going on. There, has, there are still 16 seconds to close and I cannot monitor now that. So we can wait for them to come back to the same main session. Okay. okay. Yes, seven seconds. And I guess everybody will be coming back because they, it took longer for the breakout rooms. Okay. Okay, I guess everyone should be coming back to the main session. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Um, everybody's back. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I um, I'll just um, repeat what I said earlier. Um, using Google Slides in this way um, really allows not only collaboration between your students as a teacher, you're able to see all of your students work at the same time and offer feedback. Um, even in the classroom, um, if you're in face, if you're face to face, you can only work with maybe a group at a time or an individual student at a time. But by clicking on changing the layout to grid view, you're able to see all of the slides at once. And you can choose if, um, if you notice in the beginning, I have this circle that you can use, where students can use to drag it onto the slide if they need help. And so by just sitting, um, by just looking at your screen in this way, if someone were to put a red circle on their slide, you can go to that individual student and offer feedback, um, you know, like um, uh, using the comment feature. Moving back, could we go back to the HyperDoc? And this time we'll go down to the apply feature. For the sake of time, um, I'll ask that we just use the first, um, complete the, uh, use the first option, which is to create a public announcement. Um, I just want you to see in this, for this part of the um, assignment, you can give your students choice. Um, for them to display or demonstrate their understanding, you can choose um, giving them an opportunity. Not everyone should not um, doesn't have to create the same product. You know, so um, I just gave two options where you can make a public announcement or um, create an, an infographic. Um, for, uh, as I said, for the sake of time, could we just um, all choose to use the, to create the the public announcement? You just click on the app on the click on the link and it's going to take you to screencastify um, which is a google um, extension and there's a feature a submit feature where your students can it works similar to flipgrid to an extent where your student can um, record their screen only record their screen and their voices or rec um, record their audio uh, their webcam only so for this we're going to be using the webcam an audio feature. I hope I'm not rushing. If you're okay with the pace, um, you can just give a thumbs up or so if you're okay with the pace that I'm going at, please, please let me know how you're doing. If there are any questions, please use the chat feature. All right, so um, we just take uh, two minutes uh, to create a public announcement. Again, you don't necessarily have to do it. Um, it's just um, an opportunity for you to see Um, un unfortunately, because this is a Google extension, if you're not using Google Chrome, 
Um, if your students are not using Google Chrome, they may not be able to use the Screencastify because as I said, it is a, it's a Google Chrome extension. So it may not work in um, Safari or Internet Explorer or um, Firefox, but it's okay. I, I, as I, I said, this is just um, modeling for you to see what a hyperdoc is and how you can utilize this feature. Uh, okay, just and, to much better. Could we please make a copy of it for ourselves? Is it possible? Say that again. Uh, is it possible for us to make a copy of it so that we understand it and figure it out uh, later on also? Is it possible? Yes, um, a copy of the hyperdoc that I have here. Exactly, exactly. Because it's very yes. helpful. The detailings could be just modified to have first go with the class, you know, that way. Yes. Yes. Um, we're actually going to make one together. Um, so, but but you could pay, make a copy of this one that I that I have by just going to file and make a copy. Yes. You're most certainly um, free to do so. Actually, it's not giving the option. That's the reason I asked. It's not giving me the option to make a copy. Okay. Thank you. That's great. I just got it. Thank you so much. Yes, I had to change the privacy setting. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's okay. Okay, guys. Um, now that you've seen a hyperdoc, we're now going to create one of our on our own. So to begin, um, we're gonna choose our, when you're creating an, a hyperdoc, you first have to choose your objective. If you remember earlier, I said a hyperdoc is intentionally designed. So choose your objective. You're gonna determine what resources you're going to use. So for example, are you going to be using Google, certain Google apps only? Are you going to be using Flipgrid, um, Edpuzzle? Um, whiteboard.chat, any resource, whatever applications um, you would want to use for this activity, you would determine all of that ahead of time. And then you create your document. Um, so it's just three steps or three, you begin with three ideas. Um, again, I'm going to walk you through this of, um, for creating your own. I'm just giving you an overview here. Once you're finished creating your hyperdoc, um, for this, demonstration, we're going to be using the explain, um, explain, engage, apply template. There are many other um, learning cycles that you have the five E's, you have the workshop model. Um, I'm going to show you, give you an opportunity to, I give you the resources for you to have other templates um, that may suit you. So I'm going to give you the link to the template that I have. Excuse me, I had it all loaded up, but because I had to restart my computer, it kind of, um, so just bear with me for a second. Okay, so could you click on this link in the chat? This is a, a template for one that we're going to be creating together. Okay. 
Okay, hold on. Let me try to change the settings. Hold on, please. Please do accept my apologies again. I, I had to restart my computer so all my documents got closed. <laughs> but I did have all of these ready for you. Don't worry, Wanda, we can now make a copy of the hyperlink template. Okay. All right, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> So this, this template, um, again, it, it guides you through um, the process of creating your HyperDoc. Um, based on, this, so when you, in the Explore box, for example, it tells you what you would insert, whatever links, images, videos, articles, anything that you want your students to work on independently. And then you're going to choose after they finish exploring, what task do, um, would you like for them to complete? In our example, so this is what it looked like for us. These were the resources that I wanted um, my students, the students, so these re were the resources I wanted the students to engage in. And the task, I had one task for each resource. In the explain box, Again, you can have, you can add a video again, an article, or you can just pause for a whole group discussion. We paused where I, I had all um, the videos and the articles in the explore and for explain, I wanted them to reflect on the user information they got, they gained from the resources in the explore um, portion and you worked on an interactive uh, Google, Google slide document. And then finally for the apply, at the end of it, how are you gonna demonstrate, how are the students going to demonstrate their understanding? Um, are you going to assess, assess this, um, this piece? Um, is it gonna go for a grade? Um, please note also that when you're creating a hyperdoc, you can decide as the teacher the duration on the duration of your hyperdoc. Is it just for one lesson? Is it for is it going to last for a week? Um, you know, for example, I, I taught last year when I taught um, the computer classes, I only saw my students twice a week. Um, so when I create HyperDoc, I created HyperDocs to last for two weeks because um, that would give them at least four class sessions to complete the activity. Okay. For the sake of time, again, because we do have um, to create a choose your own adventure story and that one is a little bit more time consuming. Um, are there any questions? Do you think you can follow along this template to create your own or do you need some guidance from me? Oh, may I ask a question? Yes. Hi Wanda, this was this was amazing. I uh, I am so blown by this hyperdoc, and definitely going to try. Uh, uh, you have mainly in three uh, a sub the explain, explore, and apply, isn't it? Yes. So in uh, the explain, you kind of um, uh, this could be applied to a, isn't it? It could apply to an intermediate or a middle school or a high school, isn't it? It 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 could. 
we could take we want now uh, can, will yeah. all uh, uh, continue continue then i'll ask sorry 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 go on i stop go yeah on. so then i just wanted to conclude uh, that do is this or uh, is the hyperdoc always in this explain explore and apply or is no, there something not. um there are other templates out there and i will share that in um i'll share um just give me a few let me i'll share a resource for you with multiple um with temp other, other templates. templates that you can use yes so wanda once we make a copy you want us to go ahead and play around with it and create or what are we doing yeah so um, the objective is for you to are we waiting for you to do something no um we so do be, because it's it's laid out in, in it's that explicit i think um, you should be able to follow along to create your own. We're not going to create one today unless you, if you need any additional support, you can always let me know. But I think it's um, it's it's explicit enough to guide you through on what resources need to go there. Okay. Do you want us to like go ahead and name it, like go to file and put our name, maybe? Yes, you can do that. You can make you can make your own copy and rename it so something that you can use um, after today's session. So basically, uh, my understanding about this hyperdoc, I may be wrong also. Just correct me if I am. Uh, is that various links are uh, linked together? That's the reason the document is known as hyperdoc. Maybe it's a it's a website link or it's a video link or it's a, a reading material link. And step by step, the child can go. So, am I am uh, if I want to in, inculcate the step of inquiry in that? Should I modify? Can I modify it? You can modify it. Yes, you can modify it to anything that you want. The up, the overall objective of a hyperdoc it's not just a document for students to consume information. Um, as you know, this for example in the in the first phase, if it's in the explain explore phase. When I gave you a video, you needed to do something after watching the video. After reading this article, you, you had to complete a task. That is the difference between just a document with hyperlinks and a hyperdoc. A hyperdoc requires students to demonstrate their, in their understanding. It also um, gives students op an opportunity for, to collaborate. Um, so it's it's not just a document that you links like um that you create links to. Okay, okay. So independently, the child explores and then come back together to share their understanding. Yes, 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 thank you, thank you. yes, yes. So um, yep. moving. Are there any other questions? Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, I know we are running short of time, but then uh, the work that they collaboratively do on one particular uh, template of HyperDoc uh, that could uh, uh, be also linked to a manage back. I mean, a task given over there. Uh, can that uh, happen, or is it only to the Google Classroom? No, I, I because this, this I wanted to show different ways that you can use Google Apps. That's why I chose that. It doesn't have to be. You can choose any other resource that you want. There are some schools that are not Google schools that don't have, um, apps, uh, are not G Suite schools. Maybe you're a Microsoft school. Maybe you use more um, white, like the whiteboard.chat or whiteboard FI. You, there are other resources you can use. It doesn't have to be Google. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Wanda. Okay. Um, if there are not if there aren't any other questions, I would like for us to move on to the next activity. Are we all okay with that? Yes, Wanda. All right. Okay. Next, we're going to learn how to create a choose your own adventure story. Now, there are different ideas. Um, there are other ideas that you can use. Um, 
usually when you think of um, choose your own adventure stories, you think that, oh, this can only be used in maybe for writing in language arts, but you can also use this in different subject areas. So for example, in social studies, you can have your students choose alternative paths, you know, to of historical figures. In science, you can have students show different outcomes for a choice in lab. Okay, if we did this, then maybe this could have happened. Um, I'll show you what it looks like so that you can have an idea. Um, you can use a choose your own adventure story in math, where students, um, you're giving them, a, give life to problem solving. Um, once, and, we, and there's so many more. Let's get into creating one, and then you'll see how you can apply this to your subject area. Um, again, let me just put the link in the, in the chat. Wanda, if you want to make breakout rooms at any point, just let me know, okay? Okay. Please give me a second. Sorry, please give me a second. I okay. Computer is really slowing down this afternoon. Again, I apologize, my internet seems to be shaky. It's taking a little while for me to load this document for you. Wanda, can you share the link to the chat or is it still yes, downloaded? I'm no, I'm, I'm sharing it. Okay, so kindly, um, Kindly go to this link. This is an example of a uh, choose your own adventure story that I created for this. I created it specifically for this session. Take a minute or so to go through that so you can see what it what one looks like. Oh, this is very nice. Yeah, uh, we I, I I could actually weave a, uh, uh, an entire physics lesson into this. It would it would uh, <laughs> that that's very nice. I, I find that I find this fun. <laughs> so we're going to create one today. Um, 
I feel like I'm rushing and, and I'm, I apologize for that. All right, so let's, um, let's get into creating one on our own. Are we all ready? Okay, so just, um, I actually wanted you to create one in, uh, how much time do we have left? Okay. Wanda, is a, we just started like 15 minutes later, it's now 3.45, so I would say maybe 10 more minutes. We can okay. keep going 10 to 15 more minutes so people have time to somehow complete a little story with your guidance. Okay. Okay, guys, so like anything else you have to plan your lessons uh, you would have to plan your story what is the event um what what path let me share my screen Okay, so the essence of creating a choose your own adventure story, it's all in the planning. So you first decide what is the event, what's the first event that is going to take place. And when this when you choose, may, when you make a choice, what do you want to have happen next? And then when you make that choice, what do you want to have happen next? And the students can choose their um, choose how it's ended. So, for example, in this in this example, we this is the beginning of the story, and we're reading through, and then we're we've encountered two choices. If I click this choice, it says to turn back and go home. My story ended. I can. Yes, my story ended. I can choose to, oh, that's not the ending that I would like. Like if I made another choice, what would have happened? So I go back to the home and this time I'll choose another ending, another, um, I make another decision. So I chose that. And again, I have two other choices. I'll choose this one. Okay, if I made another choice, what would have happened? And so forth. So how do we create one of these? Um, it requires a lot of planning. Um, as you can see, you would have, if you're doing the teaching your students how to do this, you will first have to teach that you, you will model it the way that I modeled it for you. And you'll have to teach to have them work in groups first, maybe to to plan their their stories. How is it like? What what events do you want to have take place, and what options, what actions or options with your with the um, readers or the persons interacting with your stories have? So let us just um, real quickly create one on our own. So just open a new um, a new tab and type slides.new to open a, a blank Google slide. So I'll do the same thing. Okay, so I'm starting off with a blank slide. 
I use shapes in my Okay, so I go to insert and I'll insert a shape. And you can choose what shape you would like. You would like to type in the shape, you just double click and you're able to type. Um, again, we'll make this one really short um, for the sake of time. Please stop me if you, if you think I'm going to um, quickly. I'll now have two other, I'll start my adventure from now. I'll go again and I can choose to use the same shapes by just duplicating. You can click Control D on your keyboard to duplicate a shape. follow along with me. I need to create another slide. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this, the first one by clicking on the slide in the sidebar here and click Control D on my keyboard, or you can right click and click Duplicate Slide. I would use it as my template, so I would just I would I would want to duplicate the, this slide as may, um, many times. So I'm going to delete the text in the shapes so that it becomes a template. Again, please unmute and ask any questions or stop me if you if you think I'm going too fast or if you need any clarifications. We could also uh, insert an animation. Yes, you can insert an animation. You can insert a picture. Um, this is, it's up to, it's all up to your own creativity. You can have pictures in here. You can have audio. And then I'll duplicate these maybe just about four times because we, we're making a very short, um, a very short one here is just for demonstration purposes. All right, so my first uh, action, I said, all of a sudden, it's, it started to rain. What do I want to have happen next after it started to rain? Uh, I can delete this.
Guys, I'm just making this up as I go. <laughs> um, you can choose to build one story um, and then go to build the other one. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm building the, uh, the options for the started to rain. So after he runs on the retreat for a shade, um, maybe I'm going to have an alligator. <laughs> Wanda? Yeah. Uh, we could also have these slides come in one by one, one after the other, isn't it? Not for a choose your own adventure story. They're actually clicking. Um, they're choosing their, their own outcomes. Um, so it's not the, the okay. switch. Okay. Yes. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay. So we're just building the story first. And then we're going to make it into a choose your own adventure story where when you click in on one option, you led to something else. Okay. I'll just have him die here. <laughs> All of a sudden, a bear appears out of the bushes. I'll explain what I'm doing in a minute. I'm sorry. Um, I hope I'm not confusing you. Okay, so let's let me go back to explain what I've just done. So I have the starter of my story on the first slide. If you choose this option, this is the continuation of this story. He runs on the retreat. And this happens. If the students choose this path, we're now building what will happen if they choose this option. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. I'm just going to duplicate this and change. I'll have three again.
Okay, please let me know by giving a reaction whether or not you, you understand what I've done so far and if I, it's okay for me to move on. Yes. Okay. Okay, so what you have to do next is to link your, link the objects on your slide to another slide. So for example, when my still when you interacted with my story, you'll notice that no matter where you clicked, if you clicked here, nothing happened. Only if you clicked in this box where you um, moved on to another slide. So that's what you want. You want it to be, you want your students to be able to go along. You don't want them to be able to click anywhere and advance to another slide. So to do that, you will insert, you first need to link each object to it, the slide that you want it to stay on or to, to advance to. This one, I want it to stay on this slide. So I would right click, sorry. And I can click on link. And I would say slides in this presentation. And this is slide one. So I will have it linked to slide one and click apply. So that way this slide, if anyone clicks on this object, it's going to stay on this slide. If you click on this object, I want it to move on to slide two. So again, I will right click, choose link, or you can click control K on your keyboard, slides in this presentation. And I want this one to go to the next slide. So I will click next slide and apply. But this one, I want it to go to slide, maybe slides, um, slide five. So I will link this one, click link, slides in this presentation to slide five and click apply. Next, I'm going to add a rectangle. Um, are you with me so far? Insert shapes and I'll choose this rectangle. I'll cover up this entire slide with that rectangle. I'll make it transparent by clicking on the fill color, it's transparent. I will link this rectangle to this slide, slide one. Click apply. And I'm going to send it to the back by right click, order, send to back. So let me show you what happens if I click present. No matter where I click, it's not advancing. If I click on this link, it goes to that, it advances. Is that clear? You do it again, please. Okay. Yes. I first linked each object. Everything you put on a slide is an object that you would have to link to a particular slide. I don't want my students to, if the students click on this object, I don't want them to advance to the next slide. So I right click, I choose link, and I, it, I had link in this presentation and I selected slide one, then apply. This is slide one. It means that if the students click on this link, they will stay on this slide. If you click on this link, I want you to advance to the next slide. If you click on this one, I want you to advance to slide five. If they click on any of the white spaces, I don't want them to advance. So I added a shape, which is a rectangle. Then I made it transparent. I linked this slide again to slide one. And I sent it to the back. I clicked on order and sent to back. I have a tutorial on YouTube on this. I can 
um, put that in the chat for you so that you can see how to make one on your own. Oh, that would be very kind. Okay, so let me just um, find that link and I'll put it in the chat because I know the time is against us. Uh, uh, Wanda, we could also you know, put in music. Or yes. Sound. Yes, you can put anything you want. You can be as creative as you'd like to be. Um, So let me just put a link to the YouTube video. I created a tutorial on this a while ago. So I'm gonna put the link here for you so you can follow along. And as I mentioned, my email address is wanda at mistechiescorner.com. You can always email me if you need any additional support and I will be more than happy to support you. Wanda, you can share your email to in the chat if you wish to, and then we will, the organization will be sharing also contact. Okay. If you, people want to reach out and in the platform for the BTC, there will be also an opportunity for interact with you. Okay. So I linked, um, I, I just put in the chat the uh, link to the, my uh, a YouTube video that uh, tutorial that I've created. And I also put my email address um, so you can re reach out at any time. And I thank you again for joining me on this session. I again apologize for the- Hello and the welcome back to no, okay, thank you very much, Wanda. Thank you very thank much you. for everyone being here, um, joining this workshop. Um, it's always sometimes we have some challenges too with technology, and we have to be open minded and understand that not every is not everything is always under our control. Thank you so much, everyone, and thank, thank you, Wanda. Wanda. Thank you have so much. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful thank Saturday. Thank you, Wanda. That was very nice. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. From Slice Carnival. Bye. So that's what I'm